For the adventure stars, put on your protection and let's add custom armor to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Alrighty, friends, let's back into the once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom armor set to Minecraft, which will include the ability to actually trim that armor. Now, this is not custom armor trims. That's something completely different and actually way more complicated. But for the time being, let's just jump into the item packet and we're going to right click a new Java class called the mod armor materials and we're going to make this an enum over here because well in this case it is an enum sadly there isn't any helper class so we have to implement the armor material interface manually over here so we're just going to implement that hover over this and implement all of the methods over here there's quite a few of them and then in this enum we're going to create all of the different fields so we're going to start with a private final string called name then we have a private final int called durability multiplier. Then we have a private final int array called protection amounts. We then have the private final integer of enchantment value. We then have the private final sound event called equip sound. Obviously going to be the sound that you that is called when you equip this. Then we have a final float called toughness. And we have another private final float called knockback resistance. And then lastly, we have a private final supplier of type ingredient. I'm going to call this the repair ingredient. Awesome. We will also need the following. And that's going to be a private static final int array. And that's going to be called the base underscore durability. And this is going to be equal to the following values. It's going to be 11. 16, 15, and 13. There we go. Now we can hover over any of the different variables over here and add the constructor parameter. Very important. You want to hold shift and then select the last one. So everything here is selected. Hit OK. And then all of them should be added to the constructor over here. And what we can then do is we can go into the different variables and actually change them. So the first one here is the durability for type. So basically the durability of the item depends on what the armor type is. So the armor type just means, you know, if it's a helmet, chest plate, leggings or boots, so nothing too crazy. So what we want to do is we want to get the base durability pass in ptype.ordinal, which basically just gets you, well, basically, you know, helmet is zero, one, two, three. That's literally all that we're getting. And this is basically what is defined right here. In vanilla, they have this defined a little bit more complicated. If you click on this, press Control H, and then go to the armor materials, you can see that they have this done in an enum map over here, which is honestly just, I mean, it, it does the same thing. It's just way more complicated to basically represent. I think that that's a normal base durability integer array is probably going to be fine. And then we times this by the by this dot a durability multiplier awesome continuing along for the defense over here we have a similar idea it's going to be returning this dot the protection amounts and then passing in p type dot ordinal again there we go and then the rest is pretty straightforward this is just the enchantment value the equip sound is just this dot equip sound the repair material a little bit more interesting that is going to be this dot repair material dot get or repair ingredient dot get right very important the string this is extremely important, so pay close attention over here. Tutorial mod mod ID plus colon plus this dot name. If we don't do this, then the issue is going to be that your custom texture for the 3D representation of the armor is not going to be under our own mod ID, which is of course not something we want. We want to have this under our own mod ID. And then here, this is this dot toughness, and then this is can you guess it exactly? This dot knockback resistance. Awesome, that is the entire class done. This is just a normal enum. So here we're just going to make the sapphire. And of course, then we have to pass in all of the different things of the constructor. So the first one is the name. So there's going to be sapphire over here. Then we have the durability multiplier. Let's call it 26 over here. Then we have the int array. That's just going to be a new int array. And we're going to just explicitly put this in. That's going to be, let's say, 5, 7, 5, and 4. The idea here being that 5 is going to be the... This is, of course, the protection amount. So this goes from helmet, chest plate, leggings to boots. So that should be fairly self-explanatory. Then we have the enchantment value. That's 25. And the sound events dot... And you can start typing in equip. And you can see these are the different sound events over here let's choose gold i think that that's okay and then we have the toughness let's do one zero knockback resistance and then a supplier of ingredient dot of mod items dot sapphire but not the sapphire pickaxe that would be crazy sapphire dot get and everything should work with no errors at all. You can, of course, also double check the code in the description below in the GitHub repository. If you have a second mod armor material, 
you would duplicate this. They are separated with a comma, and the last one ends with a semicolon. Absolutely, this is a completely normal, basically, enum, like an advanced enum, so to speak. Nothing crazy going on. If there's any confusion, highly recommend to check out some more Java basics, because that should be pretty much just a normal and easy thing to do. Now that the material is there, we can now add the different items, and they are actually fairly straightforward. Let's just get... Actually, no, let's not get the whole... Let's get the sword over here because um, I don't respect the whole item so there you go there's gonna be the sapphire helmet and of course don't forget to change the name right here in the given in the register method and this is going to be an armor item here first parameter is going to be the mod armor materials dot sapphire the second parameter is going to be armor type and you can see it already suggests this to us that this is going to be the type helmet and that is going to be it so we can now duplicate this three more times and get the chest plate over here this is going to be once again changing the name here Sapphire chestplate, still an armor item. We just need to change the type over here to chestplate. That's very important that this is the case. It's going to be the leggings and then here the same thing, leggings. And this is going to be of type leggings. And then last but certainly not least, the boots and then the boots here. And of course, lastly, the boots here. Always make sure that all of this is set up correctly so that you have helmet then ch change name right here and also the armor type correctly and then you should be good to go. Let's immediately add them to the creative mode tab because uh, otherwise I might just forget. There we go. Successfully added to the creative mode tab and then let's add the translation and the textures as well. Here we go. Translation very straightforward and then when it comes to the textures, the item textures, th those should be fairly straightforward as well. They just go into the item folder. Of course, also available to you for download in the description below. However, the 3D representation is, I mean, not like a little more complicated. It's not that bad, but in the the textures folder you want a new directory called models and inside of there you want another new directory called armor make sure that this is the american spelling very important and here we have two more pngs to copy over the sapphire underscore layer underscore one and underscore two and those look kind of like this so basically they are a 3d representation right this is going to be sort of how the you can see that this is sort of the helmet this is the chest plate right and then here in the underscore two you have the boots and the leggings here as well so that is basically how this is going to go very important that the naming here is correctly it has to be sapphire underscore layer underscore one it always has to be this and nothing else nothing crazy the name given right here is the first part of this name so if you were to call this whatever this one then you would have to call this one underscore layer underscore one Please pay attention to that. Make sure that this is written correctly. I've seen this time and time again that people just name this whatever. Pay attention to this and then it should work totally fine. And then we can jump to the data gen over here. And the first thing we actually want to do is we want to go to the item tags. You might be like, what? The item tags? This is exactly right because we want to make our armor trimmable. That means we want to make make all of the vanilla trim materials a bit basically appliable to our armor. And for this, we need to add this to a item tag. And that's going to be this dot tag item tags dot trimble armor that's exactly right we want to add the mod items dot sapphire helmet dot get and then we can just duplicate the others so that's going to be a couple of times there we go let's just format this a little bit differently and then this is going to be the chest plate and then this is going to be the leggings and this is going to be the boots and that's going to add them to the specific tag as well and then there's a very very interesting thing in the item model so in theory what you need for custom trimmed armor is you need a json file for every different like trimmable armor material the issue there is that this is conveniently done in the let's take a look so if you press shift twice and look for item model generators the from right here this is done in the generate armor trims method right here which is private and you can't access it anyway you could you could in theory make this public with an access transformer but that doesn't really get you anywhere because it's still not going to generate anything and um i don't know what it is with ford because fabric has uh, this specific method basically just laid open for people to use if anyone knows a updated way or if they you know if a new forge version has come along where this is sort of available please do leave me a comment down below sometimes it just says that there's an update over there but i just don't understand sometimes data gen in forge very freaking strange i'm gonna be honest here but what we have is some custom stuff so this is of course all available to you in the description below and also big shout out to el redstoneano because they basically well made this and while it's not like as complicated it's basically just putting in the work once to get this done so first of all we need a linked hash map here of all of the different trim materials that's step one and then step two we need this incredibly long method once again all of this is available to you you can see that basically here you just want to change this to your mod id 
And when you have this, then, well, basically, it's going to generate everything for you that is going to need. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy over here, but that's going to be fine. And now, literally, we can simply call in the register models method, the trim trimmed armor item, and then just say mod items dot sapphire helmet. Duplicate this a couple of times for the chest plate, the leggings, and the boots. And there we go. Now you might say, oh, why do we need this crazy method? Couldn't we just do, you know, those couple of uh, Jason was manually? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, no, uh, let's just run the data. And I'm going to show you that this is going to generate, I think it's 44 or 45 different Jason files. So, um, I mean, be my guest, do all of them manually. I think that that is ludicrous. I didn't think that that's a, a crazy idea. Let's take a look at this. We can see. There you go, 45 different JSON files, because as I've said, in the item models, you can see everyone needs its own JSON file. I don't know why Minecraft did it that way. It seems very strange to me, but it is what it is. That's how they do it. And luckily, though, we have the custom method for this to make this much easier. Right. So, um, yeah. So once again, huge thanks for making the method over here. I mean, once again, it's not like in cr a crazy complicated method. It's just you just have to go through it once, make sure that everything is working. And then there you go. But yeah, there we go. We we got this and we this is actually everything that we need. So we can jump into the game and put our armor on. Let's go. All right. Fans us back in Minecraft and let's put our armor on and you can see absolutely freaking fantastic everything working exactly how we would expect it to and the armor looks absolutely freaking awesome and now let's take a look at the smithing all right here we go let's take a look let's put the smithing in there and you can see because we've put it into the tag we are now able to put the armor in here and if we put redstone dust in there you can see it both works in 3d as well as for the item itself and that is basically the reason why you want to well add all of this stuff to the to the data gen so that the items display properly and then if we actually put this on you can see it all works sometimes it might be weird because of the way that your custom armor model works right because if you have a little bit of a more custom one then the trims might not work totally fine but you know what that's still pretty cool and that is custom armor added to minecraft and that's already it for this tutorial right here next time in this video we'll talk about the full armor effect again hope to see you there so yeah